You're tied to two other people, handed a sponge, and sent into the ring. Your opponent? Commodus, emperor of the entire gosh darn Roman Empire. You barely have time to think before crunch. There goes your skull. Fight over. Welcome to ancient Rome. You think people are crazy these days? You have no idea what they were like 2,000 years ago. I've spent the last week researching some of the craziest and absolutely deranged Roman emperors to ever take the throne. We're going to be placing every emperor in this video on a scale from sane, to unstable, to downright demented. Let's hear about some insane emperors. You can't say the word crazy without mentioning Caligula. It's fair to say, this guy was bonkers. One might even refer to him as bananas. He was a bloodthirsty fellow. According to some historians, he actually declared war on the ocean god Neptune. The story goes, at one point he had wanted to invade Britain, but his soldiers didn't like that idea and they were near mutiny. So instead of returning home in defeat, Caligula decided to save face in the most sane way possible. By declaring war on the sea and ordering his soldiers to collect seashells and other ocean-related trinkets, while sounding trumpets and stabbing the very waves themselves. <laughs> Extreme embarrassment avoided, am I right? One of my favorite stories is the time an oracle, which is essentially a god-powered fortune teller, told Caligula that he would have no more chance of becoming emperor than crossing the Bay of Bay on his horse. And my guy took that personally. After he unfortunately became emperor, he threw up a giant floating bridge across the Bay of Bay, and crossed it on his horse. Ah, got him. Wait, the oracle said you have no more chance of becoming emperor than crossing the Bay of Bay on your horse. And I became emperor, and crossed the bay on my horse. He was right. I'd put Caligula here on the scale. Not lacking all semblance of sanity, but also I wouldn't trust him around my dog. Take what you will from that sentence. But Caligula only ruled for five years. What about someone with a little more time under their belt? Let's talk about Commodus. Right off the bat, Commodus' reign marked the end of what was known as the Good Emperor's Period. Truly an unfortunate thing to be remembered for. Commodus was known for his prowess. As not an emperor, because he was really bad at being one, but a gladiator. He was a legend in the Colosseum, going undefeated 735 times. Turns out, when you're the most powerful person on Earth, people don't really want to hurt you. He would fight not only humans, but animals, like elephants and lions as well. In one day, he killed a hundred lions and two elephants. Of course, a fair fight would be too unfair for Commodus. The lions would of course be drugged out of their minds, while the elephants would definitely be strapped in place. It would be funny if he messed up the orders one day, and a hundred completely non-drug lions were released at him. Sadly, it never happened, and his adventures only got wackier from there. Once, he rounded up everyone in the city who didn't have feet, tied them together, and gave them sponges to throw at him, and then proceeded to club them to death. Honestly, I could not fathom the thought process that goes into this. But hey, when you're the emperor of probably the most powerful empire on earth, you can do whatever you want. That amount of power definitely made him go a little crazy. At one point, he tried to rename pretty much everything after himself. Rome became Commodania, Legionnaires became Commodonae, and Roman Senate became Commodian Senate. You get the idea. That all adds up to a pretty good rating on the wacko scale. I'd put him about here, a little bit below Caligula. For the next emperor, we're going to go to his Wikipedia page, scroll down to the reputation section, and I want you to notice something. It's entirely about food. His whole legacy was just about food. A picture's worth a thousand words, right? Here's a bust that was made of him. It was said he used to indulge in banquets up to four times per day, inviting himself over to a different noble's house each time. At one such feast, there were served up no less than 2,000 choice fishes, and even 7,000 birds. Think about that. That is a single meal's worth of birds. Bro was mad. Let's learn some stuff. Starting with his early career. He killed his grandmother to secure her inheritance, as we've all done at some point. This is the sign of a mentally stable man. He was also told a prophecy by some oracle that said he would rule longer if his mother died before him. And it's pretty clear what his choice was here. At one point during his reign, there was another rival emperor that tried to fight for the throne. Vitellius resisted at first, but then caved in and tried to give up. But plot twist, his bodyguard stopped him from giving up, and the common townspeople that supported him rose up and fought back against the invading army, no thanks to Vitellius. His body was later found dead in the street. What a character, and what a goddamn legendary reign. I'd put him here on the sacred sanity scale. Not the most sane guy by today's standards, yet somehow pretty solid as a Roman Emperor. That was pretty remarkable, but I don't think that was quite crazy enough for our standards. Let's ramp it up a few dozen notches. That's right, boys and girls, it's time for the legend himself. 
Nero. There's a common myth that Nero himself started the Great Fire of Rome, just so he could have more space to build his house. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but the sheer fact that that's something people would believe about him already speaks wonders about his sanity. Lastly, Nero wanted to be an opera singer. He wanted to be an opera singer real bad. Fortunately, he was the emperor of Rome. And when you're emperor, turns out people kind of have to do what you want. So he would commonly host these long opera performances. There was only one catch. The doors were guarded and nobody could leave. This might give you a sneak peek into what his performances were like. People would commonly fake their own deaths just to try to escape. That's pretty crazy already. Let me hit you with some more rapid fire things he's done. He burned Christians to light his garden, killed his second wife, then found a dude that looked like her and married him. And finally, while Rome was burning, he sang a song. I'm just gonna go back to the second one though. He killed his wife, found a dude that looked like her, married him, and just lived with that. Combining this information together, we're gonna put Nero here on the graph. Smoothly dominating the competition, Nero is the craziest Roman emperor of all time. If you made it all the way to the end, subscribe because I'm making more videos like this soon.